He wants to go out. Here. Oh, don't be such a silly. It's freezing out there. Give him to me, Marusha. Vanya, open the door. Out you go. He'll tell us when he wants to come in. Now then, where's my ladle? Rabbit stew, Vanya, your favourite. I knew a cat once who became chief forester. Grandpa, now you're being silly. Marusha! There's yours, Vanya. Thank you, Grandpa. I'm sorry, Grandpa. No, I expect you're right. After all, I'm just a silly old grandpa with too many stories. Oh, Grandpa, we love your stories. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and last night you promised to tell us about the girl who could see the whole world in a transparent apple. Here's yours, Pigeon. Would you like that story? Yes, please, Grandpa. Well, it takes about as long to tell as it takes to eat a plate of rabbit stew. I'll tell it as you eat. Now, there was once an old peasant... And he must have had more brains under his hair than me, for he'd become a merchant and took things every year to sell at the big fair in Nizhny Novgorod. Of course, I can never do that. I can never be anything better than an ordinary old forester. Grandpa, I said I was sorry. <laughs> well, God makes some of us merchants, some foresters, some good, some bad, all in his own way. The merchant had three daughters. The youngest was as pretty as little Marusha. <laughs> but the other two gave her all the work and did nothing but look at themselves in the mirror. They called her Little Stupid because she was so helpful. <laughs> One summer, the merchant was packing for his trip to the fair. He asked the girls what each would like brought back as a present. The eldest wanted an expensive necklace. The second wanted a dress with gold braid. The youngest wanted nothing at all. But when her father pressed her, she asked if he might find her a silver saucer and a transparent apple. The merchant laughed and said he'd do his best. Oh! Father! Out of the way, little stupid. Yes, let us through. Where's my necklace, father? And the dress. You haven't forgotten the dress? Yes, yes, your presents are here in this box. The dress. It does have a gold braid. Of course, of course. And in this velvet bag, the necklace. Is it? The finest amber in all Nizhny Novgorod. I'll look heaps better than you in this. Won't. Necklace is better than a dress any day. Is, is, is. Hey, father, let me help you down. Oh. Well, don't you want your present, too? I had to go from one end of the market to the other before I could find what you wanted. When you've taken your coat off, Father, come in first. You've had a hard journey. Oh. Oh. Father, Father, she says an amber necklace would have cost more than a gold-braided dress. Uh, well, it would. It wouldn't, would it, Father? You, you wouldn't spend more on her than me, surely. Girls, girls, don't be disagreeable. Well, I'm hungry. Me too. I thought Little Stupid was baking some cakes. Burning them, probably. The cakes are made. They're there on the table. <laughs> and your sister's in the window seat spinning a transparent apple on her silver saucer. What a dull. Mm. Dull as dirt. Come on, let's take a look. And with that, two greedy girls crept up on their little sister, stifling their giggles. But what they saw stopped their laughter. Spin, spin, little apple in the silver saucer. Spin so that I can see the world. Let me peep at little Father Tsar on his high throne. Let me see rivers and ships and great towns far away. And as she looked at the little glass whirlpool in the saucer, there was the Tsar, the little father, God preserve him, sitting on his high throne. Ships sailed on the seas, their white sails swelling in the wind. There was Moscow with its white stone walls and painted churches. Why, there was the market at Nizhny Novgorod. All the world floating before her, brighter than leaves in sunlight. The elder sisters were sick with envy. Little stupid... If you give me your silver saucer and transparent apple, I will give you my dress with gold braid. <laughs> a dress? Who wants a dress? Little stupid, if you give me your silver saucer and transparent apple, you shall have my amber necklace. <laughs> Thank you, but I could never do that. Your presents from Father. Oh, oh, look. It's the great river Volga with men on the banks, towing ships against the stream. And look. There's a sturgeon asleep in a deep pool. 
The sisters wanted the silver saucer and the transparent apple very much. Next morning, they told Little Stupid that she must come with them to where the berries grow to pick fruit. While they waited outside, she ran to her father and asked him to look after her treasured things. He put them in a box with a lock. In the forest, the little one picked berries so fast that she soon had a basket full. When she stood up to straighten her back, she saw that her sister's baskets were empty. And in the hands of the elder sister, their father's axe glistened in the sunlight. Give me your transparent apple. Give me your silver sauce. If you don't give them up at once, it will be the worse for you. Darling sisters, dear sisters, I don't have the sauce or the apple. What a lie! Yes, she never lets them out of her sight. Liar! They caught her by the hair, and between them they killed the little pretty one. The one they called Little Stupid, because she was so good. They searched for the saucer and the apple, but of course they could not find them. As it was getting dark, they made a hole in the ground and they buried the little one under a birch tree. On the way home, they rubbed their eyes to make the tears come. Their father asked them, What's the matter, little pigeons? I wouldn't call them pigeons. No, black-hearted crows is what they were. They wailed that their poor little sister had lost herself in the forest, that they'd heard wolves howling and that the wolves must have eaten her poor thing. The old mother and father cried like rivers in the springtime because they loved their little pretty one. But before their tears were dry, the bad ones had begun to ask for the silver saucer and the transparent apple. No, no, said the old man. I shall keep them forever in memory of my poor little daughter whom God has taken away. So they didn't gain from their sister's death. Wait, wait. Too much haste sets your shoes on fire. The story's not over yet. Winter snow came, and then the spring, and the buds began to burst on the trees. One day, some lambs strayed into the forest, and a young shepherd went after them. Under a little birch tree, bright with new leaves, he found a mound of earth, and from it grew a single reed with lovely flowers all around it. The shepherd took the reed and carved it into a whistle pipe. He pursed his lips to blow. But before he could make a sound, the pipe began playing by itself. Play, play, whistle pipe. Bring happiness to my dear father and my little mother. For I was killed deep in the forest for the sake of a silver saucer and a transparent apple. Play, play, whistle The shepherd ran back to the village with the whistle pipe singing its song over and over. And when the merchant heard the voice of his daughter, he cried till the tears dripped from his old beard. He asked the shepherd to show him the place where he'd found the reed. Under the birch tree, they dug into the dark soil. And there was the little girl, lying as if she were asleep. Suddenly, the whistle pipe changed its song. My sisters killed me for the sake of a silver saucer and a transparent apple. Wake me, dear father, from this bitter dream by fetching water from the holy well of Tsar. Till then, dear father, a blanket of black earth in the shade of a green birch. So they put the soil back on the girl, and the villagers put the elder sisters in prison while they decided what to do with them. The shepherd boy watched the mound night and day, with only the whistle pipe and its sad voice to keep him company, remembering the girl's sweet face. The merchant went to the palace, and when the Tsar came out onto the steps in the morning sunshine, the old man fell before him and told him the story. The Tsar gave him a glass of water from his holy well and made him promise that when his daughter awoke, he would bring her, her sisters, and the silver saucer and the transparent apple to the palace. Carefully, the merchant carried the water home. The black soil was brushed aside, and the water sprinkled on the young girl's face. And sure enough, she woke as if from a dream. She leapt up laughing and crying, and threw her arms around her old father's neck, and soon he was crying too, and the young shepherd who'd not left her side, he was crying with them. Did they go back and see the Tsar? They did. They travelled to the palace and waited until he came to take the morning air. All except the shepherd boy. He hid away in the crowd. 
And these are the cruel sisters. Uh, yes, Lord Tsar. When the sun goes down, their heads must come off, yes. for they are not yes. fit yes. to see yes. another day. Yes. Yes. Oh, little father Tsar, please, take my transparent apple and my silver saucer. Only forgive my sisters. If their heads come off when the sun goes down, it would have been better for me to lie under the black earth in the forest. Such kindness in one so pretty. Very well. So shall it be. You have a remarkable daughter, sir. <laughs> she, she is a blessing to us indeed. Uh, let her show you what she sees with her transparent apple and her silver saucer. Come, little one, spin your apple. Show the Lord Tsar the world in its whirlpool. You see, little father, sir, clustering towns, your soldiers marching, ships at sea, day and night, and the clear stars above the trees. The world in a whirlpool. <laughs> now, daughters, bow down before the Tsar, for we must begin our journey home. Uh, wait, sir. Since first I saw your daughter, I have been captivated. <laughs> Her kindness is a lesson to us all. Little sweet one, little pigeon. Will you be my Tsaritsa? Oh. Oh. Kind mother to holy Russia. My lord Tsar, as my father orders and my mother wishes, so it shall be. Oh. A gentle answer. But what of your own happiness? I would ask only that my old father and my little mother and my dear sisters should live with us here in the palace, as we were in my father's house. And I say this, everything must be forgotten and forgiven. And may the evil eye fall on the one who speaks first of what has been. They married, and every city in Russia sent a silver plate of bread and a golden salt cellar, and they had many children and were very happy together. And ever since then, the Tsars of Russia have kept the silver saucer and the transparent apple, so that whenever they wish, they can see what's going on all over Russia. Perhaps even now, the Tsar, the little father, God preserve him, is spinning the apple in the saucer and looking at us and thinking it's time that two little pigeons finished their supper and went to bed. What about the shepherd boy? Yeah, our shepherd boy watching it all from the crowd. Ah, the shepherd boy. <laughs> he turned sadly away and went back to the forest where he lived quietly in his hut, just like this one. Poor shepherd boy. Oh, I don't know. If he'd married the pretty one, he would have had all her family living with him. And not in a great palace, but in a little hut like ours. And he'd have never had room to get away from them. Grandpa, what about the cat? What cat? Did the cat really become Chief Forester? Oh, that, of course. But how? Simple. He was dumped deep in the forest by a man who didn't want him. The wild animals had never seen a house cat before, so he told them that he'd been sent to be their Chief Forester. They were most impressed. He married a pretty vixen and had the bears and the wolves bring him food. Now, rabbit stew all finished. Yes, yes thank you, Grandpa. Thank you. I'll let Vladimir in. What story will we hear tomorrow, Grandpa? Ah, tomorrow. Tomorrow I have a special surprise for you. A secret. Oh. All right, Vladimir. I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs>